السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ نحمد ونسلی ونسلم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد رسوله النبي الأمين المقيم الحليم الكريم اللعوف الحكيم وعلى آله وصحبه المعين أما بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My dear brothers and sisters in Islam and respectable audience and participants of this global peace and unity conference i hope you have been enjoying a very pleasant time in a very relaxing mood but now i have a specific request for you and that is that is it possible that you can spare half an hour for a very serious patient hearing for me is it possible a patient hearing Thank you thank you very much I appreciate your patience The reason is that in this 30 minutes talk I'm going to deliver a very important message of Islam that is the utmost requirement of the time in this conference i want to deliver a communicate for the whole mankind through you a global message of islam and that is the message of peace through your unity so that the people around the globe they may belong to any religion any culture any race any society they should understand that islam stands for peace islam stands for tolerance islam stands for mutual understanding and dialogue islam stands for harmony islam stands for mercy islam stands for compassion Islam stands for human dignity and we want to make it clear not for any other reason but just to communicate the message of prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and just to communicate the mankind the message of Quran then Islam does not stand for any kind of violence Islam does not stand for any kind of militancy Islam does not stand for any kind of terrorism. Islam does not stand for any kind of brutality. This is Islam which introduced the whole mankind with mercy, with peace, with global unity and with dignity of mankind. That was the time at the raising of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him when the total dignity of mankind was lost. when there was a system of brutality all over the world people were cutting the necks of each other there was racial discrimination 
religious discrimination tribal discrimination there was no respect for slave islam stood up for the poor people islam stood up for the oppressed people islam stood up for the orphans stood up for women stood up for children and he gave the respect he gave the dignity to the whole mankind irrespective of their religion irrespective of their culture irrespective of their race so this is islam who came for the unity at the globe this is islam who came for promotion of peace at this globe this is islam who came for the dignity of mankind on this globe my dear audience i will give some time during my talk for expression of your uh, expression of your ideas or your passions your sentiments but i hope you will continue the patient and silent hearing my subject is very significant and the subject of today is jihad perception and reality i want to explain today in this global peace and unity conference what jihad is and what is not today the perception of jihad is totally wrong it can be by the mistakes of our own people and it can be by the mistakes of other peoples but within the muslim world and outside the muslim world particularly in the western world the perception of jihad whenever the word jihad is heard it is taken as act of killing act of fighting against non muslim act of brutality it is i want a hot water warm thank you and it conjures the muslims fighting against the infidels in order to spread islam it is taken as an act of coercion but the fact which i want to communicate to the mankind through this honorable audience is bismillah there is a table at the bottom if you want to keep it there thank you that this is totally a wrong concept misconception reality is totally different let me make clear according to quran and sunna of holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam the word jihad its literal meaning and its technical meanings its etymological root it is from jahad or juhud both are it etymological roots literal roots of the world this word jihad necessarily does not contain the meaning of any act of killing or any act of fighting or any act of warfare this has been wrongly understood and wrongly represented and presented the correct concept of jihad we have to differentiate between the perception and reality the concept of jihad based on its original word literal etymological and shari meaning is exerting exertion struggling striving strengthening putting your extreme effort according to your extreme abilities for what come to counter the evil to achieve a good for the sake of allah and for the prayer of almighty allah so you see you can go and consult the books of lugha all books of lugha imam ibn faras in mujam al lugha abu mansur al azhari in tahzib al lugha imam raghib asfahani in al mufradat ibn manzur lisan al arab you can consult any book you will not find a single difference or dispute on the meaning that islam either jihad from jahad or juhud it means any tiring act or situation 
little earnings which come through personal labor extreme effort in order to achieve the betterment of the mankind in order to achieve the defense against the devil in order to achieve the defense against your lower self in order to promote the god in order to the promote the dignity of mankind in order to promote self purification in order to achieve the good results which have been proclaimed by god might yalla and prophet for the better of mankind this is the meaning of jihad an extensive effort so jihad includes defense it can be a defense struggle of defensive struggle against your enemy defensive struggle against your lower self and nafsul amara a defensive struggle against any wrong kind of wishes and propensities and wrong desires like lust greed arrogance hatred corruption all immoral and immorality and every kind of moral corruption any effort which may be spiritual which may be social which may be political which can be religious which can be of any nature religious or secular which leads to eradicate the society from any kind of corruption that is known as jihad and this is for the safety of the life of man and not for the killing of mankind now a very significant point of quranic teachings is that we can understand any quranic concept through two ways either through the text and text is the wordings of a particular verse or through the context context mean some verses before that particular verse or words or verses coming after that particular verse so either we can understand the concept through the text or context let me be very bold and i have no hesitation as a student of quranic sciences as a humble student of the science of sunna and a humble servant of islam and muslim umma i want to explain and communicate and declare this quranic fact that there are 35 verses of quran how many 35 verses of quran which include the world of jihad or its derivatives either in the form of jihad or mujahidun or jahada or jahada jahadu yujahidun jahid or jahidu any derivative of jihad there is total of 35 verses in holy quran and let me make it clear to all those people who are always discussing the concept of jihad with a negative denotation and who consider that islam has given a brutal concept against mankind and i am addressing at the same time to the muslim brothers who are mistaken who are misled who are misguided and who declare they are violent they are brutal criminal activities of terrorism and they give their activities the name of jihad and at the same time i am addressing the whole western world those who think that islam has introduced a very wrong device and this means a holy war holy war is a wrong translation in english dictionary there is no concept of warfare in the world of jihad both sides should listen there are 35 verses of holy quran deal with the concept of jihad and i am declaring without any fear of rebuttal that not a single verse of holy quran out of these 35 verses not a single verse of holy quran contains the world of jihad and world of fighting or killing together in a one text 
you will not be able to find a single verse in the holy quran acts of some misled people some ignorant people some misguided people some criminal people because of their wrong terroristic activities the in holy concept of jihad of islam cannot be given a bad name 35 verses not a single verse combines the word jihad and qital word jihad or killing word jihad or fighting word jihad or warfare these two words have never been revealed in any single verse from al fatiha to wan nas for word of holy quran this is the position this is the position of the text now coming to the context out of 35 verses which deal with the commandment of jihad in 31 verses of holy quran out of 35 35 verses of holy quran have no context of fighting and warfare with the world of jihad 31 out of 35 there is no context of fighting no context of war no context of killing even a lawful fight is not mentioned in 31 verses of holy quran there are only two verses four verses which possess only four which possess the context of lawful warfare with them and four verses are available only in one surah and that is surah at-taubah verse number 16 and verse number 81 so i am conclude that there are only two places in holy quran in surah at-taubah verse 16 and verse 81 where the lawful fighting lawful warfare and lawful defensive war I am emphasizing on the word defensive lawful war has been mentioned in the context of jihad and no other place can be found and you can just keep in your mind out of these verses are in surah taubah now coming to the next very important point i am going to explain the context between jihad and the fighting lawful war you know that the defensive fight defensive war this was allowed and the commandment of defensive war was revealed in holy quran after holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam migrated to madina 13 years of meccan period no verse of qital no commandment of fighting even in your self defense no commandment of warfare even justly to save your life even this defensive war commandment was not revealed in 13 years of meccan period this commandment of defensive lawful war was revealed in medina after holy prophet's migration to medina you should be very clear on this and i want to make every mind clear on this subject that the defensive war commandment was revealed in medina not in makka but on the other hand we find five verses on jihad commandment of jihad was revealed in makkan period before migration when defensive war was totally prohibited and the companion in spite of the violence in spite of the act of brutality in spite of the act of killing massacre killing which were being done by the disbelievers the criminals of mecca against muslims they were patient and they were not allowed to take up the arms just to save their own life there was no permission of defensive war even at that time five commandments of jihad were revealed in holy quran 
my dear brothers and sisters i just want to mention so that you may make mental notes it is surah al furqan verse number 52 fala tutil kafirin wa jahidhum bihi jihadan kabira this verse was revealed in makka man jahada fa inma yujahidu li nafsi this was revealed in makka wallazina jahadu fina lanahdiyannahum subulana this was revealed in makka five verses command containing the commandments of jihad were revealed in makka this fact explains the reality and differentiates the percept between perception and reality that concept of jihad is a broad based concept it is a broad based human struggle it can be a religious struggle it can be a moral struggle it can be a spiritual struggle it can be an educational struggle it can be a struggle for charity for the better of mankind for the better of being for the better of god for the better to upgrade the oppressed people to protect them from any kind of violence so this is a broad based concept and educationally the reasoning is ijtihad intellectual effort so this concept given in holy quran this is a broad based concept and it is not confined to the act of lawful warfare now i am coming to the kinds of jihad there are five dimensions of the concept of jihad one is spiritual dimension we have we are confused and we have confined and we have made the concept of jihad very narrow lawful war is a single one dimension of the broader concept of jihad in the same way as ibadah when we hear the word ibadah we consider an act of prayer or fasting but no ibadah is a comprehensive concept any act of modesty any act of purity any act of humbleness any act of renunciation any act of charity any act of piety any act of humility any act which is in the betterment for the people for the sake of allah is known as ibadah in the same way jihad has five dimensions one is the spiritual dimension second is academic dimension third is social dimension fourth is political dimension and fifth is defensive dimension why we are neglecting four basic dimensions of the concept of jihad and we are emphasizing just on a single dimension by spiritual dimension holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam stated jihad means he said al mujahid man jahada bi nafsi a man who fights against his lower self to control wrong negative wishes propensity and to develop his morality to develop his spirituality to develop his humanity to develop the spiritual condition the spiritual state of his life so this tazkiyah self purification this mujahada which the sufiya the awliya have been doing throughout the history of islam this is known as the biggest jihad of islam remember it is narrated in sahi hadith related by imam tirmizi holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he was asked who is mujahid ya rasulullah holy prophet said al mujahid man jahada bi nafsi mujahid is the one who fights against his lower self and who tries to protect his human and spiritual and moral and ethical qualities in his life through process of self purification holy prophet was coming back from a lawful war along with his companions and he said at that time to his companion address them and he said rajana min al jihad al asghar ila al jihad al akbar 
وَقَالُوا مَلْ جِهَادُ الْأَكْبَرُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالَ جِهَادُ النَّفْسِ Holy Prophet said, we are coming back from smaller jihad and we are returning towards a greater jihad, bigger jihad. Companions asked, Ya Rasulullah, which one is the bigger and greater jihad? He said, to fight the wrong wishes and desires of your lower self and to improve your spirituality and morality in a way that your life becomes beneficial for the whole of mankind. This is the greater jihad. In the same way, second dimension is educational, academic. Jihad bil ilm, to spread the knowledge and to fight against ignorance and to fight against illiteracy and to spread the knowledge and to work for knowledge, establishing the university, colleges, schools and provide ilm to every single person of society. This struggle is known as al jihad bil ilm. The third is jihad bil mal, any act of charity in order to alleviate the poverty. You spend your money, your wealth, your property, your earning to resolve the deadlock of the poor people, to help the orphans of the society, to help the poor of the society, to help the depressed classes of the society. So these kinds of acts of charity according to Islam is known as jihad bin mal. And the last dimension and again the political dimension of jihad is Holy Prophet said Afdalul jihad Kalimatu haqqin in the Sultan in Jairin The best of jihad is if you say a truthful word in front of a corrupt ruler in front of a cruel ruler in front of a dictator if you stand up this is a political reformation and you say the truthful words it means you are committing a jihad so jihad is a peaceful political process jihad is a peaceful educational process advancement jihad is a peaceful process of charity is a peaceful process of social reform and is a peaceful process of spiritual uplifting and the last dimension is the defensive dimension and defensive dimension means that if you are attacked somebody attacks on you so you are allowed according to the UN no charter according to international laws of the present world according to the laws of human rights every single nation member of UN no has the right of self-defense if your faith is attacked on, if your land is attacked, if your life is under attack, you can stand up, but not you. State, this is responsibility of the state, responsibility of the government, responsibility of the political authority to stand up and fight in your self-defense to defend your land, to defend your faith, to defend your country, to defend your people. So jihad del kital is only reserved for defensive war and that is lawful war as it is provided in the Charter of the United Nations. <laughs> but keep in your mind, in spite of this fact, in spite of this fact, Holy Prophet وسلم, gave specific instructions and specific instruction given by Holy Prophet was that even if you are engaged in a lawful warfare, defensive war, the state, this authority is in the hand of the state. Not a single individual. Let me make it clear. Let me make it very sound and profound and clear. Let me remove any kind of confusion and dignity that not a single person not a single scholar, not a single leader, not a group of individuals, not any organization has an authority to declare jihad on the surface of earth or to declare warfare. If any individual or any group of individuals takes up arms and stand killing the people, maybe in enemy lands, that would be regarded as terrorism and this cannot be regarded as jihad.
but even if even if lawful warfare holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he said you cannot kill the women during the warfare in the battlefield holy prophet saw he said you cannot kill women you cannot kill children you cannot kill priest you cannot kill diplomats and ambassadors you cannot kill the people worshiping in churches and synagogues you cannot burn the trees you cannot burn the people and you cannot cut down the arms so in during the warfare during war islam gives the message of peace islam does not allow the killing of non combatants islam does not allow the killing of civilians does not allow the killing of innocent people if islam does not permit you killing of women and children and non combatant civilians even in the battlefield and warfare how does islam permit you to commit suicide bombings or to commit terrorist acts so we want to make it clear islam has no responsibility if anybody is committing suicide attacks he is a criminal he is not represented of islam if anybody is committing any act of terrorism on any pretext on any conditionality that terrorist is a criminal he is out of the ambit of islam he has no link with prophet muhammad no link with quran no link with islam concluding concluding my talk i want to conclude look at the message of islam given by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was in it comes in bukhari and muslim it is muttafaq alayh he stated to his companions that there was a lady in israelites she had a cat and she tortured her did not provide the cat food with food and water ultimately the cat died holy prophet said almighty allah punish that lady and threw into the hell fire because she became the reason of killing of a cat another it comes in bukhari and muslim holy prophet said a lady was going and she saw a dog he was about to die because of thirst she provided water to the dog and saved his life prophet of islam the prophet of humanity the prophet of mankind the prophet of mercy the prophet of compassion the prophet of kindness he stated that because that lady saved the life of a dog almighty allah forgave her sins and sent her to the heaven and jannah when holy prophet stated this that that lady went to jannah because she saved the life of a dog the question is companion asked ya rasulullah we would be rewarded if we commit the acts of kindness with animals holy prophet yes said yes any act of mercy and kindness with any living being you will be rewarded on the day of judgment my dear brothers and sisters in islam and my dear brothers and sisters in humanity i want to ask the religion of islam and the prophet of islam who said that saving the life of a dog will lead you to the jannah and violently killing a cat will leave you to jahannam if this is the teaching of islam then islam how can islam permit you to take the life of innocent non combatant civilian people islam will never allow and this was the practice adopted by holy prophet adopted by the khulafa e rashidin holy prophet and companions used to give the aman and the aman the declaration the agreement of safety and security given to the people of najran i am ending my words on that paragraph holy prophet said that god is the protectorate and muhammad the messenger 
is the guardian of all lawful rights on the people of Najran and they were Jews and Christians by majority. Those who are present, those who are absent, their lives are safe, their families are secure, their affiliates are secure, their possessions are secure, their houses are secure, their belongings are secure, they have religious freedom, religious practice is free, everything, the bishop would not be removed from his job, any priest would not be removed from his job and all people busy in worshipping according to their own religion they are given full protection and holy prophet said that they will never be oppressed or nobody would be allowed in my ummah to commit any crime or act of injustice against these people because Allah and prophet Muhammad has provided them the security so the non-muslims whether living in non-muslim Muslim states in Islamic countries whether they are living in their own non-Muslim countries. My last message, I am leaving with this message. My dear brothers and sisters, you are citizens of Britain. You are citizens of Europe. You have your passport, your citizenship. You are enjoying your rights, legal rights, constitutional rights, judicial rights, financial privileges, social economic supports, your job, your salary, you are getting every facility here as other non-Muslim citizens are getting. If you are getting all facilities, so how can a person or who is a true Muslim can be supposed getting all facilities of the citizenship? How can he take up arms or how can he commit suicide bombing against non-Muslim brother citizens? This would be a haram act, an act against Islam. For those who want to still those brothers who want to still fight against civilian non-Muslim brothers of the countries where you are enjoying the facilities, then they should not live here as the citizen. They should leave the country. They should do hijrah. They should go back to their home because this character is against Islam and the conduct of Prophet Muhammad. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, are you ready to declare this, give a declaration showing a unity of global peace, unity, that you condemn every act of terrorism committed by any person or state and you are for peace and you are against suicide bombings and against terrorism. Do you agree with this? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, this declaration is passed. I congratulate the organizers of Global Peace and Unity Conference. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.